so our um, webinar today is on the topic of capacity building and uh, urban innovation. And the presentation's title is Eureka Experiential Learning on Urban Innovation, the case of the Urban Living Lab in Giudecca, Venice. Uh, the main speaker is Adriano Cancellieri, who is a urban social sociologist at the UAB University of Venice, where he is the coordinator of the URI's master program in urban regeneration and social innovation, a member of the research center on social and spatial inclusion of international migrants. Uh, his main publication and research interests are intercultural relations and stigmatized spaces, space and social action, social change, urban regeneration from below and user centered education and public engagement. He is the founding member of the transdisciplinary network Terce Urbane and part of the editorial committee of Terce Urbane, Italian Transdisciplinary Journal of Urban Studies. After his uh, presentation, uh, our discussant will be uh, Beatrice Maria Bellet, who is a postdoctoral researcher with uh, a PhD in urban planning, design, and policy. She is working at the UAB University of Venice as communication manager for the TESI project. And her research interests are related to regeneration processes and civic participation, co-production and co-creation, public policies and social innovation practices. But uh, before start, uh, uh, starting with our webinar, as usual, let me just say a few words uh, on uh, our project. Uh, I hope you can see the slide. So just to introduce myself as well, uh, I'm Silvia Cittadini and I'm a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of uh, Bologna. And I'm working on uh, the TESI project, Training and Education in uh, Social Innovation. Um, this uh, project is bringing together seven partners uh, from the Adriatic Union uh, macro region, uh, mostly ac um, academic and research centers. The University of Bologna is the lead partner, uh, but we have uh, academic partners also from Greece, uh, Serbia, Albania, Croatia, Slovenia, and uh, the other partner from Italy, who is uh, presenting today, the U of uh, uh, University in Venice. We also have a number of associated partners that support the project that are mostly uh, third sectors of organization, development agency, and uh, governmental uh, um, bodies uh, that are working uh, in the field of uh, uh, social innovation. So uh, the main project uh, objectives are to raise competencies and skills in social innovation and to establish a network of universities and research centers to define and implement a joint master program on social innovation. Uh, indeed, this uh, joint master is going to be, let's say, the uh, final uh, um, product of our of our uh, pro, uh, project in order to uh, um, offer um, educational opportunity within the Adriatic Union region in the field of social innovation. With this main uh, uh, objective, uh, we are going to have uh, three uh, project outputs, uh, an action plan for the preparation of the joint master, a strategy, and an innovative transnational network. Uh, 
Uh, indeed, um, the objective of this project is also to uh, bring together not only uh, academics uh, and research center universities, but also uh, business partners, NGOs, uh, uh, innovative companies, uh, and uh, all those actors uh, that uh, are um, somehow connected with the social innovation. Uh, Mm, this is our aim, not only because we want uh, them to contribute uh, to our training activities, but also uh, to, uh, for them to benefit from our training opportunities. So the joint master that we are currently preparing will be a joint degree. This means that the participants uh, will uh, uh, have the opportunity to study within uh, one university and then to have uh, a mobility abroad within another university. And uh, the degree that will be awarded will be accredited at least in two countries. There will be also the mobility of professors. And uh, in order to um, uh, offer opportunities of learning by doing, uh, the, the, the master uh, will include an internship period within business partners, but also uh, the participation of business partners in the teaching activities and the organization of study tours and on-site visits uh, within uh, uh, innovative companies and industrial side. So uh, what, what we mean with the social innovation? Uh, social innovation occurs when collective action achieves uh, three main uh, forms of change, alone or in combination. The satisfaction of human needs, material and immaterial, not otherwise met or considered, the empowerment of marginalized social groups uh, through the enhancement of capabilities and the recreation of identity, thereby increasing their visibility, recognition, access, or vo voice rights, changes uh, in social power and, or, and uh, governance relations within the community and society at large. In this web framework, uh, we are going uh, to focus on um, uh, five main um, fields, topics, which are education, social and sustainable economy, urban and rural development, aging, and migration and social inclusion. So this webinar series is one of the first uh, uh, training opportunities that we uh, organize within uh, uh, the TESI project. Uh, it's a series of six webinars. We are now currently at the fourth webinar. Um, this week, there will be other two webinars. So it's a quite a full week. Uh, on Wednesday, there will be um, a webinar on data and analytical tools to visualize knowledge uh, curated by the University of Tirana. And on Friday, there will be uh, the Hellenic Op Open University presenting uh, a webinar on uh, strengthen the role of civil society to participatory design. And you are all very welcome to participate. Um, you're also welcome to uh, check our website, project website, uh, and to follow us on LinkedIn uh, to remain uh, updated on all the future training opportunities and activities of the TESI project. Thank you. Uh, now um, I will stop sharing and uh, give the floor to Adriano Cancellieri for, for his presentation. Uh, you should uh, be able to uh, share your screen if you want to share PowerPoint presentation. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Silvia. Uh, and thank you for to the, uh, all the organizers because uh, it's a great pleasure to me to, to be here and to share with you 
the project in which I am involved, the Eureka project, that is very close to to, to Adrian. So I, I'm very uh, I'm very curious to 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 reinforce uh, to create and reinforce the exchange between our projects. I start uh, sharing my screen. Okay. Can you confirm that you can see the slides? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, today I want to uh, to present the Eureka project. It's an experiential learning on urban innovation. To be more precise, uh, I want to present uh, the Eureka project, the urban living labs uh, concept in some way because uh, our uh, our project uh, is, uh, is in our project, the Urban Living Lab component is very important. And uh, in the second part of the presentation, I want to put the attention to, to go uh, a bit more in detail in the Venice uh, Urban Living Lab in, in, that I coordinate. And above all, I want to share with you the, the early positive results and uh, the main problematic uh, challenges. Okay, the Eureka project, uh, the, the name is a European Urban Regenerators Knowledge Alliance, is a three years Erasmus Plus project. Fine, fine. Uh, the, funding, uh, uh, the funding line is a, a Knowledge uh, uh, Alliance. That is the reason because we, we create this, uh, this name, Urban, uh, European Urban Regenerators Knowledge Alliance. The aim of the project is uh, to pilot an international and uh, interdisciplinary postgraduate training on uh, urban uh, innovation, a, a training with a strong experiential uh, teaching component, a lot of fieldwork activities. And uh, the idea is to, uh, to use uh, real life challenges to train uh, uh, urban innovation. The Eureka training is, and the entire Eureka project is coordinated by U of uh, University of Venice. And the scientific responsible is uh, Professor Ezio Micelli that is uh, also involved in, uh, in this project. The Eureka partnership is composed by other three European universities, uh, University <coughs> West of Timisoara, University of Deusto in Bilbao, and the Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences, but also by other seven partners, the municipality of Timisoara, and six private uh, social and uh, cultural enterprises that are uh, Melting Pro and uh, Lama in Italy, Espacio Open in Spain, Casa Apply in uh, Timisoara, Pakhausis Weiger in uh, Amsterdam, in uh, Netherlands, and the international network Transurpales. That is a, a, a very interesting uh, network that uh, is uh, uh, composed by uh, more than 100 uh, uh, social centers, cultural, cultural centers in all of Europe. I coordinate uh, the project and, the, and above all the urban living lab in Venice. That's the reason because I, I will focus my attention on, on this part of the training. Eureka training aims, uh, Eureka project aims to pilot uh, the training of an urban innovator profile. Uh, obviously it's a very complex uh, aim because it's a concept very, uh, very gray, we can say, an urban innovator profile that aims to manage uh, at the same time social and spatial change through five uh, different uh, actions. The promotion of a bottom-up and user-centered approach, trying to address social and spatial inequalities. The adoption of a place-based approach and the idea to co-create uh, territorial knowledge, 
the creation of new and unusual alliances to co-design and manage territorial change, the adoption of a systematic interdisciplinary and integrated approach to urban transformation, and the constant reflexivity, the openness to a constant evaluation and redefinition of a process. We could name open planning. Uh, we started to organize, to create this training uh, with the idea that the urban innovator cannot be a single person with superpowers, but uh, the, the above and very complex processes are, can be carried out only by multidisciplinary teams with heterogeneous profiles. It's a very important point for us. The Eureka training, uh, some, some words uh, related to which are our students and which is our, uh, our faculty. Regarding the students, we have uh, 15 students from each country. Uh, the country are Italy, Romania, Spain, and Netherlands. So we have uh, a total of uh, 60 students. Uh, the students are uh, postgraduate students. Many of them are already practitioners. Uh, they have a very heterogeneous background. They are architects, social workers, social entrepreneurs, artists, anthropologists, sociologists, employees of public administration, and so on. So the, the, class, uh, uh, the class is very, very uh, in, uh, interdisciplinary. At the same time, also the faculty is very interdisciplinary and also intersectoral because all Eureka partners are involved, both university and uh, uh, practitioners. And we, we, uh, we, uh, we, are inv we, involve, we are involving also other European experts that are not uh, uh, directly part of the project. The training is based on a peer education. We have a lot of activities in which the students are um, very active, and uh, we could uh, name a radical co-design because uh, we uh, have not uh, uh, defined a calendar of activity, a calendar of, top of topics, but we uh, will co-design every time uh, the, the next module. So it's a very, very open co-design, very complicated, as you can imagine. The Eureka training is based uh, on a continuous alternation of local, national, and international activities, and also an alternation of in-presence and uh, online modules. Regarding the local activities, as I anticipated, four urban living labs uh, has been implemented in four different cities, one in Amsterdam, one in Bilbao, one in Timisoara, and one in Venice. Students will engage with the local real life challenges. So we have uh, uh, the long part, a long part of the training. Uh, in, we have uh, the, the local training. So for example, last weekend, the, the Italian students uh, were, were involved in Venice Urban Living Lab, but at the same time, the Dutch students uh, were involved in uh, uh, Amsterdam Living Lab and, and so on. Regarding the national activities, Eureka provides a national specific knowledge related to administration, law, cultural approaches, and local national sensitivities. And uh, regarding the international part, this very large part of the Eureka training, we have two, uh, two kinds of international modules. We have free in presence uh, international short schools. Uh, short uh, means uh, five days, offering common training, field visits, critical discussions. But we have also a lot of international online training modules composed by two days. We have five international online training modules composed by two days. In this slides, you could uh, try to read uh, the complexity of our training. Uh, as I anticipated in the last slide, we have uh, a continuous alternation of uh, 
international, national, online in presence activity. And uh, the Eureka training started last October and will end the next October. So it's a one year program. Okay, now I, uh, I want to say something uh, more related to the Urban Leading Lab part of the Eureka training. Uh, from our point of view, from the university point of view, Urban Leading Labs is part of the third mission. Uh, that is uh, the idea to share and co-generate knowledge through public engagement. There is an increasing interest in third mission, an important role uh, is played by the European U Union and in Italy by ANVUR, Italian Agency for the Evaluation of the University System of Research. The third mission is an ambivalent field. In, the third, in this field, we could uh, uh, find the engaged university, the third, but also the fourth mission, uh, the public sociology, the public anthropology, for, for example, but also the technological uh, transfer, the entrepreneurial university, so uh, the economic valorization, valorization of knowledge. So there are many uh, different uh, uh, approaches, in some way also conflicting approaches that are part of this new and uh, increasing field of the third mission. Urban Living Labs. Urban Living Labs are local experimental and uh, participatory paths involving uh, different types of uh, organizations, institutions, and actors in uh, public-private partnerships. Uh, there, are, uh, there is a, a proliferation of experiences of Urban Living Labs, especially, again, uh, uh, supported by uh, Europe, in this case, by European Commission. Uh, who started funding the creation of living labs. Uh, also, uh, for uh, urban living labs, there is a, a strong heterogeneity of modes of action and a sort of uh, strong opacity. Some of the more interesting uh, experiences of urban living labs are in Italy, the interdisciplinary experiences connected to the inter-university network called Tracce Urbane. For example, the San Siro uh, experience in Milan, coordinated by the Polytechnic of Milan and by Francesca Cognetti, the professor Francesca Cognetti, but also the experience in Rome in Torbella Monaca neighborhood, coordinated by Professor Carlo Cellamare. Another Italian experience of uh, interesting uh, urban living lab is the Aurora Lab uh, from the Polytechnic of Turin. Uh, abroad, uh, I want to uh, underline the experience of uh, the work of Sandra and Rigon at UCL in London and the work of uh, Riardon in uh, New Orleans. The Urban Living Labs, uh, the, as I, um, I said uh, in the previous slide, uh, are very uh, uh, large meaning, but we can uh, uh, find some common goals of the urban living labs. I underline the word goal because uh, they are the goal of the urban living labs, but not always they are uh, really uh, uh, part of the urban living lab uh, uh, activity in some way. But uh, regarding the goals, uh, we uh, can uh, uh, find uh, this, uh, this, uh, this free component of the urban living lab. Living means uh, working in a real life context and uh, co-creating uh, and involving the highest and the most heterogeneous number of factors. Regarding the second word, lab, means uh, experimenting actions to adopt an ongoing uh, reflexivity and to uh, have an uh, iterative approach to test, experiment, reflect, and retest, and re-experiment and reflect again. The urban uh, world is a bit uh, more uh, uh, maybe uh, um, complex and, uh, and uh, ambivalent, but uh, we can say that urban means uh, producing social territorial knowledge, working in a defined territorial context, uh, a building, a public space, a neighborhood, 
and uh, uh, again means engaging stakeholders on a territorial basis. Now I want to uh, go more in detail in the Giudecca Urban Living Lab. So the, the Italian part of the uh, Eureka Urban Living Labs. Giudecca is part of the uh, Venice, the island of Venice is uh, this island uh, that is in front of the uh, San Marco Square is, uh, as you can see, is uh, very close to the other part of Venice, but also very, uh, very delimited, very separated, separated in a clearly way from the rest of the, of the city. Why we selected uh, the Giudecca Island? Uh, for many reasons, because Giudecca is an interesting sociocultural mix of inhabitants and city users. In Giudecca, there are a lot of um, rich uh, uh, Venetian families, rich uh, stranger families, but also a lot of uh, um, social housing inhabitants, a lot, many elderly people, many students, many artists, uh, many new uh, families with children, and more and more uh, tourists. Uh, another important part, uh, another important factor uh, is that uh, in Giudecca, we can find a high level of local activism and a strong territorial identity. The, the third factor is that uh, Giudecca is part of Venice, but is the part of Venice where is, is it still possible to find uh, a sort of uh, ordinary daily life? because uh, the Giudecca is not yet disrupted by over-tourism uh, like, uh, as you know, like uh, the other part of Venice. Giudecca is also a former industrial territory rich in places to which uh, uh, new meanings can be given. As I said uh, earlier, uh, it's also a circumscribed uh, uh, conformation and uh, is an island uh, with uh, obviously with uh, well defined boundaries and uh, has a population of around six, uh, six thousand inhabitants. So it's uh, uh, quite small and uh, seemed to, to us that uh, it's uh, possible to uh, to read this territory in uh, during our our project. And uh, in any way. Uh, it's a, also a microcosm of the challenges of Venice, so it can uh, appear a sort of contradiction, but uh, is uh, a bit different from the other part of Venice, but at the same time, uh, in uh, Giudecca, you can uh, recognize, clearly recognize the challenges that uh, you can find uh, uh, in the entire part of Venice. So uh, for us, uh, Giudecca is uh, and uh, was and is uh, still is uh, a, a very important uh, laboratory, uh, urban laboratory, living laboratory, urban living lab. Uh, our uh, urban living lab is composed by six uh, parts. The first uh, in, uh, in September 2022. Uh, uh, was uh, coordinated by me, was uh, conducted by me, uh, was uh, composed by an ethnographic research and the first engagement with the local stakeholders. And then uh, there we have uh, five different uh, modules composed by two days in which the students are present in the island, coordinated by the Italian partners, so uh, University U of Venice, in uh, social and uh, uh, cultural enterprises uh, of uh, Florence Lama and of Rome uh, Melting Pro. And uh, we did uh, a lot of uh, work in the island, stakeholder engagement, uh, research. Uh, we created a collaborative map, uh, um, many focus groups, individual interviews. Uh, we uh, applied to a call for tenders. We uh, started also to uh, to test a sort of action, and uh, we will finish. We will end our uh, urban living lab in uh, in Giudecca uh, next uh, September with, with a, a, an action and a reflection uh, on this action with the local stakeholder. 
The main goal of uh, our Urban Living Lab is uh, pedagogical. It's very important this, uh, to underline this because the main goal is to train students starting from uh, real life challenges, linking theory to practice. The second, but also the more challenging goal is to produce some uh, insights into the local context. Above all, on three points, on the uh, satisfaction of uh, social and special needs, on the construction of new social networks, on the empowerment of local communities. Very large and very ambitious goals, but the, our idea is to, uh, to, to leave some seeds, to leave some insights in the island. You can uh, see uh, this uh, collaborative map that we created using my map, some pictures related our work in, in the island. Go fast. Uh, if you can, uh, you, you want to see uh, with more time, uh, obviously we will uh, receive the PowerPoint. I want to focus uh, the attention also on the role of social social sciences. I'm a sociologist. I'm uh, I'm involved for many years in the um, idea that social social sciences can be uh, can have an important role in urban transformation and uh, in this case in Urban Living Lab, but which kind of role? Uh, a, an important role in the exploration of the context in in-depth case uh, study research. Uh, as I told you, we did uh, some uh, ethnographic uh, research uh, in order to, uh, to provide a, a holistic and rich uh, analysis of the context. Uh, we we promote a user centered approach. I think that social sciences can be very important in this also in this activity uh, to li listen to the inhabitants, to engage and connect uh, local stakeholders, to involve and to put on value the everyday knowledge uh, of the local inhabitants, the local institutions, local uh, uh, organizations. Uh, teaching your real life experience and the experiment. Uh, a new collaborative and uh, participative way of learning is also an activity in which social sciences can have a very important role. Uh, also in the activity to create uh, continuous opportunities for collective reflections, Eureka training, in, in the Eureka training, there are a continuous uh, re reflexive uh, activity among students, among students and, uh, and us. And also, uh, obviously, uh, the social science can be uh, can play a very important role as a part of interdisciplinary teams in order to you know, to adopt an integrated approach, as I said in, in another slide. The, I go uh, to the last part of uh, my presentation. According to me, is the more important because uh, we are trying in this. Uh, last part of the training uh, to, uh, to understand and to reflect uh, on the uh, positive results of our training and also, and uh, we, we can say also above all on problematic challenges that are connected to the idea to move the university outside uh, the, 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 <clears throat> the university uh, ordinary uh, place. <clears throat> regarding the early positive <laughs> regarding the early positive <laughs> results <clears throat> we can we can say that university is still a respected institution and uh, with this uh, uh, attitude can assume an, an important role as a connector uh, that create uh, opportunities for collective reflexivity. It can be a knowledge bridge that connects also different uh, uh, subjects, different insiders, local inhabitants, local institutions, and different outsiders. Uh, the outsiders are in our project, the students, uh, the partners, the experts that we uh, 
involved in, uh, in the project. The university can help uh, bring resources, skills, and also design energy to a specific territory. Uh, we we, um, we bring uh, to the Judeca, for example, for uh, many days, uh, students, experts, and also we are we applied to a grant, to a, uh, and we <clears throat> for a grant. And so we hope to receive uh, a small amount of money to to put in uh, to in the in the island. So also economic resources. We hope the university can uh, bring in uh, to a specific territory. Another positive result is the, uh, the approach to bring the university back to the questions that uh, emerge from the everyday experience, so the centrality of experience, the importance to create exchange between universities and uh, non-academic actors. We, um, uh, we have a very positive uh, exchange uh, in an uh, Italian cluster with uh, our university and, uh, and LAMA and Melting Product are uh, two, uh, two subjects very, very um, competent in the social innovation and urban regeneration field and very open to uh, exchange and to co-create uh, the urban living lab activities with us. And uh, also, Urban Living Lab can be, uh, seems to be an ideal interdisciplinary meeting ground between uh, more analytical disciplines, such uh, as uh, sociology and anthropology, and more normative disciplines, such as, for example, urban planning. And in, our, in uh, Urban Living Lab, according to our experience, uh, sociology and anthropology can take a step forward and uh, trying to put the knowledge into urban action, into a project, while the urban planning can, stay, uh, can take a step back from their action orientation. So the urban planner can give more time to, the, uh, to their reflexivity and research, and the sociology and anthropology can, uh, uh, can um, in some way, trying to use uh, uh, in a more applied form uh, the knowledge that they, they produce. The last two slides are related to some uh, important challenges that uh, we are uh, facing. Uh, academic challenges, the, um, there is a, a dialectical tension between uh, teaching, research, and action. They are the free uh, university missions. We try to put all together in a RECA training. A RECA training is a teaching, uh, teaching activity, but is also a teaching activity with a lot of research and a lot of action. And uh, the power of our uh, initiative is uh, uh, in this uh, no, idea to put all together, to have all together, but it's uh, uh, evident that th there is a dialectical tension. It's difficult to combine the needs of teaching, the needs of research, and the needs of action. So it's uh, a very, very important to recognize this, uh, this ambivalence and this tension. Another academic challenge is the weak academic recognition of uh, this uh, experimental experiences. The third important academic challenge is related to a risk, the risk of colonization uh, in some way. You know, it's a bit exaggerated, but not uh, so much because uh, uh, in uh, some activity, uh, there is a risk uh, to, to, to treat the local context as a mere background of a ritual because uh, uh, we are uh, present in the island in a very intensive uh, way, we try to, and we created a lot of connection, but it, it's true that we are present uh, uh, for a very limited time in the island. And uh, so it's, uh, it, it can be generated uh, uh, this, uh, this kind of risk. Uh, regarding uh, output challenges, uh, there are uh, some questions very important and very challenging. Uh, 
what small change do we really want to generate? Who are the beneficiaries? Which kind of social and urban transformations we support? And uh, above all, in contexts like Venice, there is a great risk of favoring gentrification processes. There is also a risk of uh, the naive use of participation of inhabitants. Uh, also, above all, when uh, when uh, there is a lack of direction, we we uh, have the we are aware of this risk. So we are trying to to be very focused, to to be very clear with the local stakeholder. But uh, obviously, it's a very important risk, and uh, we are, we want to share with you this, uh, this awareness. The last uh, uh, slide is related to the um, other kind of challenges because uh, um, the territory outside the university, when you, we decide to, to move the university outside, we have to recognize that the territory outside the university is not a neutral field, but it is always a political and uh, agonistic field. So it's important to be responsible and transparent with local actors. And uh, but this uh, this work in entails many many transaction costs. It entails uh, uh, an important relationship fatigue. Engage uh, stakeholders and create alliances means also managing conflicts. Uh, means also to to select uh, alliances to select uh, collaborations. The idea to involve all different local actors, that is a, 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 an important part of the Urban Living Lab concept, uh, can uh, hide uh, a risk, another risk, a risk of the politicization, because uh, uh, the, the actors have not the same power. We, uh, we involve uh, an an active citizen, we involve local institutions, we involve local NGOs, but uh, they have uh, different powers. So it's important to uh, to be aware of this uh, also about uh, this part. And uh, we have, uh, there is a uh, related to this uh, risk, another risk of uh, the so-called uh, solutionist approach. So to, to find, to design the, uh, uh, some solution that uh, some technical solution to problems that are uh, that have uh, a more uh, political nature. The last uh, uh, challenge that we are facing is the the challenge of uh, expectation, because uh, uh, I anticipated, but it's uh, important to to underline again. Uh, obviously, when the university, when the European project uh, moved to a territory. There are uh, a lot of expectations from the, the citizen, from the organization. So it's always important to be clear about the results that we can achieve, and uh, and also uh, for, uh, for for which you are asking for collaboration. That is uh, uh, almost always a free collaboration and to be clear about what can be at stake with our experimental training. I finished and uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Adriano, for the presentation. Uh, before moving to the questions, I would give the floor to Beatrice Maria Bellet for a little comment. Yeah, thank you. So um, starting from the experience of, uh, um, of Eureka, I think that it's very close to what we are trying to do in, uh, uh, in our project, uh, Daisy, because I think that the Urban Living Lab could be a very interesting uh, method, but also like a tool to understand how social innovation and how is it possible to work within context and working within uh, people and with a different heter heterogeneity and a different kind of context. So I think that this could be very interesting for, uh, for us to take into account. 
And from, let's say, um, more academic point of view, I think that uh, the risk of this urban living lab, as I can, as I can see, could be that it could be um, very uh, contextual. So the, the importance uh, and, uh, at once um, is to, let's say, understand the kind of generalization that we can have from the idea of urban living lab. Because uh, I think that, for example, uh, you have four different urban living labs, one in the Netherlands, uh, one in Italy, the other in Romania, and uh, the last one in Spain. And I think that based on similar context, you can have very different dynamics. So the kind of uh, uh, relationship that you can have, the kind of conflict or the kind of collaboration that you can have among the actors, but also uh, between, let's say, the citizen and the students could be very different. So I think that from uh, an academic point of view, we can work on this, uh, uh, this work as Eureka is doing um, to understand the, the level of uh, generalization that we can have from these experiences, because I think that uh, the kind of different degrees we can have uh, on, for example, a capacity building from one group instead of another, based on the same um, theory, for example. So when Adriano was saying that we have a theory that we are using the theory we have in practice. So uh, also based on the team, the theory can be applied in different way. So I think that uh, we need to understand which kind of theory fit be fits better for a specific context and in which context we are working. Because understanding the context is also part of social innovation. Because as Silvia also mentioned in the beginning, we have like a, a collect, so the social innovation in general, as a general meaning is that is a collective action. So we, it means that uh, we have to work together and we have to cooperate and to co-product the kind of things that we think are important. But the thing is that we have to satisfy uh, human needs. So if we have uh, uh, like urban planning, so uh, whenever we have field work, uh, there are lots of people asking us, oh, can you work on this? Because uh, I don't uh, I don't like this kind of, uh, I don't know, park, or uh, I don't know, the littering is a problem, but you know, you have to, let's say, stake some priorities. So you have to understand which are the urban needs and then try to, let's say, understand which kind of things are before, uh, are have to do, um, no, sorry, have to be done before some others. And also you have to empower marginalized um, groups, but not only the marginalized groups. So you have to involve those groups into the, um, the arena. So the idea is that the social innovat uh, innovator has to, let's say, involve as much people as possible, but not as a rhetoric uh, idea of participation. So they have to, let's say, listen to the people needs, and then they have to, let's say, create the basis for a transparent dialogue among all the actors. And then the third one is the change in social and power governance and relationship, which I think comes at a local level. So starting from the operational rules that Adriano was saying and was mentioning, um, because I think that into practice, we can have some operational rules in, uh, let's say, an Ostromian way of thinking. And whenever we have these kind of uh, operational rules that, let's say, are evolving and are, let's say, recurring throughout the time, we can have also the, the kind of collective choice uh, uh, rules, which are the one uh, related to, let's say, the more urban planning stuff that uh, we consider like normative, the normative framework. So um, I think that the Urban Living Lab could be a very interesting experiment. And I was also, um, I have also an, uh, a question, but I would leave the floor to, to the others. And then if we have time, I will ask for this. Thank you, Beatrice. Uh, I would ask Adriano if he wants to comment on what uh, Beatrice said, or we can open for a question. As you prefer, if you want to collect other questions. For me, okay. Too. Okay, then uh, please, if anyone has a question, 
please raise your hand or just open your microphone. Okay, uh, then uh, if no one is uh, has the courage to ask question, I will start <laughs> with a uh, with a question. I mean, actually, I had a lot of thoughts with uh, with this presentation. Uh, especially, I appreciated the part uh, on the challenges uh, because uh, these are challenges that not often uh, are recognized and I think it's, it's they are very important uh, when we are talking about social innovation also to recognize the limits of uh, some uh, narratives and discourse such as uh, participation. Um, I wanted to ask you on this regard uh, um, on the methodology that you are using, uh, uh, meaning the user-centered approach uh, to engage different stakeholders, therefore I imagine different inhabitants uh, and uh, actors uh, in the Judaica neighborhood. How practically uh, this is done uh, and uh, what are the challenges? I imagine, for instance, that there may, there may be challenges of different uh, positions and power relations, some that are more engaged, others that are less engaged and so on. So how do you face uh, these uh, challenges? Okay, I start uh, replying because uh, uh, thank you for uh, you know, the, um, the comments, very, um, very stimulating comments. Regarding uh, the Urban Living Lab, um, yeah, it's um, um, it's a very important part of our training. We uh, decided uh, uh, also to uh, to in some way to invest more uh, in the Urban Living Lab more than uh, uh, it was written in the in the application, because uh, in the application we wrote that. Uh, there, uh, yeah, there, 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 there should have been a, a long first theoretical part and then a, a practical part, so the urban living lab part. But in the co-design uh, activity of the project, so in the first year of the project, before we we started the the training, we decided to to invest more on the uh, real life challenge on the urban living lab. So we uh, we decided to start since the beginning, uh, in the um, putting at the beginning of the, the training, the urban living lab, because the idea uh, was to uh, to produce knowledge in an inductive way. So the, the idea is to, co uh, to find all together um, the, in, in the field, what does it mean to produce uh, social change? What does it mean to produce, uh, to understand the context, uh, to, to, to connect uh, local stakeholders, uh, which are the challenge, which are the difficulties and so on. So it's a, a, an authentic, but also a very, very complicated uh, <laughs> um, way. And uh, we started in last uh, weeks to, uh, to to understand what we learned, because as you uh, uh, highlight, now it's important, it's fundamental to uh, to to put the knowledge all together, to uh, to find in some way to clusterize and uh, the the knowledge, because uh, obviously the contexts are very different. For example, just for giving an example, in um, the Spanish cluster, the um, uh, there is the local institution that uh, um, uh, that uh, is producing a very important change in the area selected by the uh, local cluster, and is a, so a very important uh, uh, partner. In our case, in Venice, the local institution is uh, uh, is uh, not present because uh, for political reason, because it's. Uh, uh, not interested in this kind of uh, activity, so it's a very important difference. Just to just to give an example, 
Um, yeah, um, yeah. So we are trying to produce contextual knowledge and to uh, to find uh, and to put all together to 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 in, uh, to uh, find. Uh, uh, at the end of the project, which is which can be uh, the 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 topics <laughs> that uh, are better to train is a very is, a, is a, the contrary we can say. Obviously, in the first part of the, of the project, we we designed we we started to imagine uh, a, a topics uh, some topics, but in a very very general way. Uh, yeah, so the the final part of the project will be fundamental. Uh, regarding the user-centered approaches, um, um, uh, that according to me means uh, to uh, to put to the uh, experience and the knowledge of the inhabitants and the uh, individual and the organized inhabitants at the, the center of our uh, uh, of uh, our co-design activities. Uh, they we we tried many uh, different uh, solutions. In the first part of the project, I was the only people involved in the Urban Limit Lab, and uh, so I did uh, a, a quite normal ethnographic research. So I, I was in the island, I walked, I talked to a lot of people, I, try, I tried to, to, connect, to, to listen to people, and yeah, not more than that. And uh, to anticipate the people that, uh, the students and the project will uh, will arrive uh, should should be arrived in uh, as soon as possible and when the students uh, started to arrive we, we i in the first part me and, the, and my colleagues organized uh, uh, some activities in, in uh, with the the stakeholders that i uh, I, I found in the ethnographic research so focus groups, but also quite informal uh, meeting, individual interviews, uh, and uh, very interesting uh, um, walking interviews. I'm uh, I always use this kind of uh, methodology because I think that to understand a context to, is very important to know. To is a good important solution to. Uh, to have a person that is an expert of a, of a, a context that uh, you know, uh, and you uh, follow uh, and do, you listen their uh, experience, his or her experience when uh, he or she uh, walk along the, the context. So a lot of different activities coordinated by, by us, but uh, starting from the, the third module in the island, we give the students the, the control of the activities and they, for example, uh, decided that uh, the people that uh, we, uh, uh, we involved were uh, a bit too activist people, so uh, too organized people, and they wanted to uh, listen normal inhabitants. And so they uh, put the, 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 for example, last weekend, they put uh, five tables, uh, small tables, very simple tables in the public space and uh, trying to, uh, uh, to show the people that pass, uh, passed uh, along uh, the, the public space, uh, their collaborative map, the, the, uh, they printed their collaborative map, but just to give, uh, no, to, to, to give an insight to, to start a conversation. Many of them are uh, very artistic, very, very open people. So they invented a lot of uh, also funny ways to involve the, the, the local citizens. And uh, so they uh, uh, collect a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, stories regarding the island stories regarding the places, regarding the relationships between people and places, because uh, the idea, uh, they favored a solution because they have uh, to, uh, to, uh, to manage an action in the island. We decided during the co-design activity that the students have to, to organize an action in the island. 
we uh, select a very open world action because we uh, decide to give the students the, you know, the, the power to, uh, to translate the meaning of this word. And in our Italian case, uh, uh, they uh, decided to uh, produce a map uh, that can also become a sort of toy, probably. A toy, a sort of uh, I don't know, I don't know the name in uh, in Italy in uh, English. Gioco del Loca. I don't know if it's goose uh, toy, no? but uh, it, it, the idea is to put the stories related to the island, uh, also the different ways to uh, to see and to live the island in a in a map that is, uh, as I anticipate, a sort of toy. Because the idea is that, that uh, it it can be the, can give the possibility to the to involve more the local inhabitants to to play a toy is uh, can be a strategy uh, interesting strategy uh, to to because also because the idea is to start from the local children uh, but asking uh, the children to be uh, uh, together with uh, at least one uh, parent so a lot of uh, uh, very recent uh, ideas uh, that I share with you uh, today, but uh, just to give uh, some examples, some more concrete examples. Thank you. Uh, I see there is a raise hand uh, from Stavros. Please, Stavros. Okay. Thank you for all for the presentations and the uh, uh, very important uh, questions you did to Adriano. Adriano, I would like to ask uh, about uh, the term of uh, gentrification. Since uh, we speak, we are talking about a urban uh, project in Venice. And um, since I live in Thessaloniki, where uh, the, the gentrification, some kind of gentrification pro, uh, process is uh, running. Uh, I would like to ask you about the feedback from the wealthy people of the island, of the inhabitants. How did they um, answer to, I think, you did uh, um, begin uh, with questions about their status and about uh, how they see uh, their city evolving through these uh, tourists and uh, all this uh, kind of uh, making living very difficult for uh, local people. Uh, did uh, take advantage of uh, your project to uh, ex uh, to uh, take positions and the the, uh, the second question is how did the authorities react in order to anticipate your uh, project did they involve did they uh, said we have no uh, idea we don't uh, participate to this project and uh, third uh, what is the real outcome for the local people? I mean, have you this uh, a study about it? Thank you very much. Okay, no, thank you very much uh, for the question and for the comments, Stavros. Very, very uh, central uh, point, obviously, because uh, yeah, we are in Venice and. Uh, yeah, we in Venice we are uh, talking about gentrification since uh, many years, every day. Um, I try to to answer, and uh, also because uh, two uh, of your questions are in some way uh, related, interrelated. Uh, yeah, uh, the gentrification is always uh, no when you work in Venice when you have. Uh, uh, an approach, an anti-gentrification 
approach uh, is always uh, you know a sort of ghost uh, that uh, is always in front of you and uh, we selected the Judaica island uh, above all because uh, 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 in some way, the the the, um, the match is not uh, finished <laughs> because uh, for many uh, people in Venice, uh, the, Venice uh, is uh, already died uh, as a city. But in Judeca, uh, Judeca became in last years uh, a sort of uh, place in which uh, live uh, also many of the activists that. Uh, uh, that uh, trying to resist, uh, act uh, against the gentrification. And uh, that's one of the reasons because the local authority is not interested uh, the local uh, mayor, because uh, in Venice there is a mayor, there is a sort of dictator, because they uh, control everything, a sort of uh, uh, small uh, Berlusconi, because it's also a, an entrepreneur, uh, yeah, very narcissistic entrepreneur. And um, it's very important because uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this person, many years, not many, some years ago, try, tried to buy an island of, the, of Venice, <laughs> of Venice Lagoon, and to uh, create another hotel for tourists. And the local uh, inhabitants of Venice, many of them uh, are living in Judeca. Uh, organize uh, crowdfunding uh, and uh, uh, and uh, in some way they succeed to block this uh, this buying and uh, from that uh, moment the the person that some years uh, after became the mayor of the city uh, from that experience obviously uh, it was created a sort of a counterposition between the local municipality and the island and uh, yeah, and we which uh, our which is our uh, position is very difficult. I'm very honest because uh, it's very we um, uh, we have a national master. Uh, it's called the URI that uh, is in Venice. And in seven years, we never worked in Venice for this reason because uh, it's very complicated to. Uh, insert your uh, your work in Venice uh, uh, without uh, creating uh, problems or gentrification problems because for example our uh, training create uh, obviously also a sort of a tourist uh, academic tourism it's uh, it's uh, it's like that and uh, um, but uh, this year we wanted to start to uh, to yeah in some way to, we we decided that uh, we cannot be uh, no uh, we have to accept this challenge and so we select uh, the Judeca we we tried always tried to uh, to to select. Uh, uh, a ben ben beneficiary of our activities uh, that cannot be connected with the uh, the great waves of tourism, for example, children, because uh, the uh, our outcome at the moment is a a, a, a toy that, that directed to children and families. So the idea is to uh, to involve directly involve the families. Uh, that's our point. Uh, we, I think that we will uh, uh, produce also a sort of uh, uh, study uh, uh, regarding the island. We have to decide if uh, the, we will be the students to produce this document or uh, uh, our uh, our team, uh, our no, uh, intersectoral team. You have uh, Melting Pro and Lama. But uh, yeah, we have uh, very clear this problem, and uh, we uh, we we are trying to avoid uh, many risks uh, selecting uh, uh, a target that is not directly part of the tourism. Regarding the rich people, uh, just in a, in a, yeah, just few words because. Uh, uh, the students uh, in last uh, weekend experience of the Urban Living Lab uh, um, uh, were smiling because uh, uh, when they um, talked to, to the rich families that uh, are present in uh, for 
two months, for example, in uh, in the island, they uh, they uh, talked a lot against the tourists because uh, the, the the tourists are, are always uh, other people. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, interesting because it's like that uh, again. Uh, it's also no, it's a mirror thing. Also, as our tourists, because we uh, went uh, to the island, uh, you know, five, twice, uh, uh, not five times for uh, in a year, for two days. So it's a sort of you no know, putting there uh, uh, fifty people. Uh, we obviously need uh, to you no. Know, to find uh, temporary places uh, to stay. And uh, so it's a very inter intertwined uh, theme. Uh, I see another hand raised, uh, Maria Manfroni, please. Yes, hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Maria Manfroni. I'm a 38 cycle PhD student at the University U of Venice. And I would like to, to thank you, first of all, for sharing your very interesting experience. Uh, so my research deals with uh, design for social innovation. And I would like to ask you if uh, designers were also involved in this project and uh, in, in your team? And if so, uh, what was uh, their contribution? Yeah, thank you, Maria. And uh, it's a pleasure to meet you <laughs> at international level. We are part of the same university. It uh, happens uh, always. Um, yeah. No, it's another interesting uh, comment. Um, I don't think that our uh, students uh, with this uh, background, but uh, as uh, it's very normal also in my in the national master that I coordinate, the design uh, tools are uh, very very uh, uh, important in our training. The design thinking, for example, but uh, yeah, uh, Melting Pro and Lama that are part of our national cluster, all uh, uh, they are using a lot, a lot of uh, design tools. So I, I think that uh, the, the design uh, is a very important part of uh, social uh, innovation, the urban regeneration activities, and uh, and at individual level, I'm trying to to create a more explicit connection between the sociology and uh, design because uh, uh, I I've always find um, found um, many commonalities, but uh, there are also no, a different language and uh, maybe as always in the academy, also no, a sort of uh, counterposition or indifference. Uh, that I don't like because, uh, as I anticipated, uh, I, 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 f I find uh, I always find a lot of commonalities, and I think that uh, uh, design and um, so social uh, social sciences, sociology and anthropology can uh, work uh, together and can have a very very important role in this in this field. Uh, is there any other question? If not, uh, I will take the opportunity to ask uh, another question um, connected to always to the action that you are implementing in Judeca, your students are implementing in Judeca. This is more general question regarding this kind of uh, community activities at the urban level. Uh, what do you think uh, is uh, uh, the main uh, long-term uh, output of this kind of activities? I mean, apart from, of course, uh, the product of, uh, of the activity itself, uh, do you think that this kind of activity helps people to engage more, for instance, in the community they are living in? or um, 
this does not really happen that much and actually everyone go back to their own and own interests and they don't are not engaged yeah it's um it's complicated to answer because uh, i don't know <laughs> i can say but uh, yeah we have uh, uh, in during this year we uh, we we found many many goals uh, for example, the goal to to help to connect the different uh, subjects that are present in the island because it's a very small island in which there are a lot of uh, associations, a lot of uh, yeah activities, in some way artistic and uh, artisanal activities. But many of them uh, uh, say that uh, when they organize things, there are a few people. And uh, many of them then don't know what happened in, in the other part of the island. So uh, we uh, we want, we would, I don't know, because uh, as I told you, the students will decide, uh, are deciding. The idea is to connect uh, the different uh, subjects in the island to, to put on value the the relationship between uh, people and place because of the island, uh, there are wonderful uh, uh, places that are not uh, so well known. But again, there is in this case, uh, no, again, uh, a great risk to, no, to put, uh, to give visibility to play to wonderful places in a, in a island, uh, uh, no, uh, like Venice. So trying to find uh, no, ways uh, they cannot generate uh, only tourism. Um, yeah, and uh, obviously the, we uh, we we hope that uh, the grant the we we applied to have a grant to continue our activity in, in the island. If we will get this grant, obviously it will be more. It would be easier to. To, to put on value our work, because if our work will finish, will end in October, uh, I think that we we could uh, uh, leave only some seeds. Obviously, as a university, we can continue in some way. For example, I, we selected to work also with our national master, also in Judeca this year, because also in national master, we work every year in one context. Not using the Herbal Living Lab tool, but uh, is uh, not so different from, it's, it's different, but not so different. Uh, so we can, you know, we can put on value using our national master, but uh, if we will receive the, the grant, uh, we can continue, uh, uh, starting from October, we can continue for another uh, year. And we could involve some of the students that uh, some of them are uh, are very involved in the project, very involved in the idea to put value, to leave value in the island. So they will be uh, available to, to live there for uh, because uh, the grant is uh, to give uh, some uh, uh, the possibility to stay in the island for uh, some for few months to free people. To, to continue to uh, you know, the creation of a network of uh, cultural uh, uh, subjects. So it will be, it's a very important uh, uh, part of our path because I think that uh, an Herbal Living Lab should also invest in, uh, in the idea to, you know, to collect uh, funding. Let's see. <laughs> Well, good luck for the grant. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if uh, uh, Beatrice wants to add something. No, there was just some some questions were covered because I leave the floor to the others to to ask different questions. But I think that um, maybe I, I didn't get really the point. So the, the first findings of uh, uh, this urban living lab. So. Um, you understand that there are these kind of dynamics. So apart from the, um, the municipality that is not, let's say, working with you because uh, he's not interested in uh, this project, what about the students uh, and let's say not only the relation with wealthy people, 
with uh, with the others and with the idea of over tourism but in general which is your uh, let's say um impression so um, about this urban living lab after three years of working uh, the impression about uh, the venice uh, urban living lab yes yeah, so mean? how how do you think it's it's going so after three years uh, and let's say the different kind of uh also yeah, yeah. conflicts that can emerge etc yeah the uh, the urban living lab started in uh, november so it's you not know, okay. seven okay. Uh, eight months uh yeah, uh, no, we are very happy. We are very satisfied about the, our work because, uh, uh, yeah, we we succeed to, to to do a lot of activities with the uh, with the local inhabitants. We involve a lot of local inhabitants. We uh, we succeed to to let the students know the context, uh, to involve the students. It's a, a, an, an experiment, so uh, there was a great risk to, uh, to leave students after some months. And uh, in uh, uh, 60 people, or uh, if we at the national level, in uh, 16 people, only one leave the project, but in the four uh, very personal uh, uh, reasons. So we are very, very satisfied. Uh, also uh, satisfied uh, uh, regarding the collaboration between university and non-academic partners. Uh, for example, uh, satisfied about the, uh, the idea to give the university the, the control and the coordination about the research part, the empathize part and uh, to give the not academic partners the the planning part uh, for example uh, yeah regarding the project uh, i have also many many criticalities but uh, the majority of criticalities are connected to the european uh, project uh, problem so a lot of uh, com complexities uh, Maybe also a lot of partners. <laughs> it's, I, I, I am very honest that to co-design a training with 11 partners from five different countries, because the Transuro Palace is in Sweden, is a, a bit too much. <laughs> and uh, above all, if you, if you use a co-designed open, uh, we really don't know what uh, will happen uh, in uh, July, for example, the next international module, we have not uh, a, a program, not because uh, we, uh, we don't like it, uh, we are lazy, but uh, because uh, there is a, a co-design group that are working, uh, composed by three students, it's very, very, and uh, the, the group started to work after the end of the previous module, so it's... <laughs> It's very, very articulated, a bit too much. And also the, the articulation of in-presence, online, local, international, for one year, according to me, is too much. And we are working, for example, on this, on, for the future, we are working on two different uh, uh, directions. The first is uh, to reinforce uh, the international network, because we created an international network composed by 100 of people, 70, uh, 60 students and 40 practitioners, practitioners and academic partners. And we want to, uh, to in some way continue this collaboration. And the other uh, point is to create a shorter international uh, um, training, not one year, not so complicated, but maybe a shorter one uh, in which the in-presence part is more important because uh, at least in our experience uh, there was for example uh, three months in which we uh, met only online and was the worst part of the project in which also the involvement of the students and the conflict among uh, us uh, uh, were more problematic so we our idea is to uh, have a uh, a shorter, intense in-presence uh, experience. For example, one week in Timisoara, one week in Venice, one week in uh, Amsterdam, one week in Bilbao, and uh, in three months, but not in uh, one year. But uh, just uh, some insight. The in-presence activity 
uh, seems very satisfying. Obviously, there are main challenges, great challenges, and uh, yeah, yeah. Again, uh, to stay one year, uh, there is also a temporary question because it's better to stay one year, but uh, twice, two days uh, every two months, or it's better to stay three months, but uh, in a very intensive way. Yeah, more, uh, more, uh, more questions than the answers. <laughs> yeah, thank you. No, but I think if I just can add something related to our project, Silvia. So just to conclude, uh, I think that uh, this uh, Eureka project could be very, uh, let's say, similar somehow to what we are trying to do in our project, uh, Daisy, because we are, uh, let's say, programming. So we are trying to structure a joint master and we have different partners, as you, uh, as we mentioned before. And so I think that knowing also the kind of complexity that can be uh, behind the kind of European project could be very interesting uh, in order to have a, let's say, a more productive somehow follow up of this project, because uh, you have is also interested in continuing also this, uh, um, this TASI project. So I think that knowing uh, what is good and what is bad from another international uh, uh, project could be very helpful for uh, for us to let's say not having the same kind of issue but maybe some other issues but trying to let's say solve uh, all of them before the the, the projects will start yeah that if means... i can add uh, uh, yeah. uh, the last important point because uh, obviously i i am uh, the, the scientific coordinator of uh, eureka is uh, professor michelli that is involved in in tesi so it's, uh, I think it's uh, easier and uh, at least to me, uh, a very pleasure to create a more explicit connection between uh, the, diff the two projects. And uh, one proposal can be uh, to invite some, uh, uh, of you, some of you in a Bilbao meeting in the end of, of October, because uh, that meeting uh, will be the meeting in which uh, uh, we have to find uh, answers to many of uh, your questions, because uh, it's the meeting in which uh, uh, we have to uh, to to analyze uh, our experience and to to, uh, to understand all together uh, what we learned and what we want to do after uh, uh, the end of the project. So, um, if uh, you are interested, I can give you more information, and uh, if uh, some. Uh, uh, some uh, representatives of uh, your project can be present. Uh, it will be a great pleasure and a great uh, way to to create a real connection. Uh, because also because uh, we are very open, obviously to also to to know to to find uh, uh, yeah, some uh, to create or to invent uh, some uh, bridge uh, to organize something uh, together after the TASI project and after the Eureka project. It's a very interesting thing. So uh, uh, thank you for uh, for the invitation. And yeah, we will yeah. try to organize in, in Tirana. Thank you maybe very we can... much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can add this thing in Tirana. Yeah, okay. that's actually very important uh, to mm. create connection and mood. So yeah, it would be great. Um, I would ask if anyone has questions, comments. Otherwise, uh, uh, before uh, closing and uh, say bye to you all um, and thank uh, Adriano Cancellieri and Beatrice for, for this very interesting webinar, I would just uh, like uh, to tell everyone uh, also connected to what we are saying of, uh, let's say, being connected. I would like to invite you to join our innovative test national network that I was also mentioning at the beginning. Um, you, those who gave uh, the allowance to receive the newsletter are receiving the newsletter and uh, you can uh, uh, join the network by filling a form. Uh, so if you want to remain connected not only to TESI as a project, but also uh, to news related to the future joint master, uh, please uh, um, join our network. 
and also feel free uh, to write us uh, for any questions or if you uh, feel like uh, there can be any sort of collaboration uh, because as uh, we were saying we are really uh, happy to to uh, connect with uh, other different uh, realities uh, said that, I thank again our speakers of today and uh, everyone for participating. Adriano, you want to add something? I think? No, no. I, I thank you for giving the possibility to uh, exchange our experiment and our uh, our um, first uh, you know, uh, reflections on that. And uh, yeah, uh, let's see next time. And. Uh, I, I hope you enjoy your your day. Thank you. Thank you again. And uh, bye bye. Thank you. Thank Goodbye, you. Goodbye, everyone. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. You too.